Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about scale, flip, and rotate. So, um, we've done videos like this before. We talk about duplicating geometry and the, the steps you can take to do it. So, things like, uh, well, scale, flip, rotate. Those are the things we're going to actually talk about. Now, which one you use, there, there's multiple ways to do it because there's multiple outcomes you may want to get to. So we're going to talk about when to use what, where, and why. And how. Okay, so I have a quarter of a table here. Um, you can see it's it's something you wouldn't, uh, if you had this, you might not want to draw it again. It's got a curve. It's got this fancy edge on here. It's got this swirly corkscrew leg, uh, the kind of geometry you don't want to draw from scratch over and over again. It is all in a group right now. So what I have done for years is use scale to duplicate this kind of geometry. So I'll grab scale like this. And with scale, I'm going to hit the modifier key to scale about center. If you're not familiar with modifier keys, they are always listed at the bottom of the screen. So you can see down here what button to hit to, to change how a tool works. I'm going to hit the option key because I'm on Mac and I want to scale about the center. When I do that, my middle point shows up. And when I start scaling, I'm flipping about the center there. So if I wanted to mirror this geometry, I would, for a long time, my, my go-to command would be scale because that's exactly what this does. Scale to negative one, you get an opposite of what you currently have. What you can't do with scale is duplicate at the same time that you are scaling so if i wanted to make it make you know mirror this basically along this face what i'd have to do is go to select it hit move i'm gonna hit my modifier key there to make a copy shift to scale on the axis and bring it right up to the other edge now i can grab scale and i can hit the modifier key to scale about center flip it over to negative one and i have half a table the other half same thing i'll grab these two like this and hit move modifier key to copy take that copy down boom right there snap it to the face by snapping to the face it assures that when i do my scale now which i'm going to do about the center again uh, i can actually just have it snap to negative one and it's where it needs to be so with that i have a very big table um, in just a couple of clicks it is there's some extra pieces there obviously because i have to go select i have to copy it and then scale it um, this is, of course, where flip makes it much easier. So having flip right here, if I select this, I click on flip. I do it to the modifier key again, because if I just flip it, I'm just going to flip it, just like scaling the piece by itself. So I'm going to hit the modifier key to copy. And then I'm going to drag this red axis over to this face, this red plane, excuse me, over to the face, release it, and then there I go. Now, I could do the same thing I did before, go to select and select both halves and then just do one copy to copy along the green. But it's actually going to be quicker to just copy this piece to here and then copy this piece to here. So again, I could go out and copy both pieces and copy them over. But to do four copies, it's quicker in the flip command to just stay in it and do that. So obviously, flip goes a little quicker than, than scaling to negative one. There's probably some scenarios where you know scaling to negative one is helpful, but uh, I don't know there. I couldn't come up with an example off the top of my head. So this worked out pretty good. Now, something to note, whether you use scale or you use flip, it's taking geometry and reversing it. It is mirroring it. So like if you had something, you held it up to a mirror, it's going to be opposite. So if I look at my corkscrew legs here, so here, as I come down the legs, you can see I'm kind of rotating clockwise. Over here, if I look at them, the corkscrew is backwards. This isn't necessarily bad. This could be good. This could be what you're going for. You know, I want, I want the corkscrew. There's meaning in this. The drift in towards the center pulls the viewer. I don't know, something like that. But this is going to happen. So intentional or not, this happens with, with mirror or scale. If you want to maintain these and have them be the same, you're going to have to go to extra steps. Or possibly, depending on the geometry, you might be able to use a different command to do it. So if I look at this table, I have the same you know, fancy edge here, but it's just a quarter. This is a, a square section. Um, so what I can actually do is grab this. It's all grouped together. Again, hit rotate. 
I'm going to rotate by this corner and I'm going to go from here, modifier key to copy, around to here. And because I'm using rotate, I can say 3x enter and it's going to copy that three total times. So what I get in that case is because my, this only works, this wouldn't work with this obviously because the shape of the tabletop is different. But with this, I have those four quadrants all connected together. And because I rotated rather than copy, I took this component or this, this leg, which was rotating the, you know, this direction. So they come down, it's still going that direction. I'm looking at it rotated 90 degrees, of course, so you can see there's, there's a difference there, but it's rotating the same direction. Now, you're probably noticing because you're you're wise and smart and paying attention to details that the top looks funky. Actually, I got, I got kind of a cool clover pattern here. Maybe I want that. Um, so what happened over here is when I copied, because I made a mirror and it's wood grain, it looks like it's going the same direction. In fact, this looks like it could be just the opposite pieces of the same wood cut in half uh, or quartered and the grain kind of mirrors itself. So this, this looks like it could be correct. Over here, this looks like there's something wrong. If I went and inlaid some other material or something like that, it might look okay. But the fact that it turns like this doesn't have it looking right. Now, there is a case where I might want to take advantage of that. We're going to talk about uh, addressing these things in just a second. But I do want to first say, you know, maybe maybe I want to, I want to go with this. I want to run with this idea. So I have over here a triangle, which is one sixth of a hexagon. And what I could do is I come in and select this material, texture, hit position, and then maybe rotate that material so that it's, you know, something like that. So it's going, the, the grain's running the direction from this flat edge all the way out to the face, or out to the, the, the peak, the tip, this thing, <laughs> pointy part. And I could take that and I could rotate it. So if, if I rotate that option, rotate here, I'll do total five times, so I have six. And in that case, it looks intentional. I, that's the way I would think this should go. The six pieces, all the grains go the same direction towards the center. Um, because I rotated, my swirly corkscrew legs all go the same. They're just rotated around the center. So that looks correct, where this looks like it's a little bit weird. I don't, I, and this is not a huge table, so I don't know why this would be broken into pieces or why they would be separate like that. Um, but really, this comes down to what's the next step. So on a table like this, uh, I, what I would probably do is grab all these pieces, make that into a single group, because I want, I, regardless, I do that with any of these, now the table is one piece. But I'd probably come in here, explode those, those four groups in the center, and then probably just, you know, make that all one piece. So when I make it all one piece, now all the grains go the same direction. I'd probably also select and delete my edges there and there too. So I have you know, connected more, more properly connected geometry. Um, so that would probably be the step that I take there and that would address that. So over here, assuming, so you could do the same thing here. Uh, if let's say I want to keep this, I want to keep this laminate where it looks like maybe four separate pieces, but I don't want to, you know, have to group it all together. So how, how would I keep that? One thing you could always do is you could come in here with the race and uh, just hide those edges. So I could go hide this over here, hide these two, hide these two, hide these two. So you could do something like that, which will give you uh, kind of a cool effect without having to merge everything together and keep it as separate pieces. There's a little extra geometry I missed there. Um, the other thing to consider how to address would of course be, like I said, these corkscrew legs. So let's go ahead, let's get rid of these three pieces. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about these legs. So one thing I could do is I could come in here and I could separate the leg from the tabletop. So I'm gonna grab all of this. I'm gonna make it a component. I'm gonna call it my new leg um, and click create. So that's gonna put it in a separate container and I'll just take this up here and I'll, I'll make this into a group also. So what I could do at that point is I could take this geometry and again, use flip, modifier key to copy, do the same thing I did before. Just copy this around in four spots. One more. And then what I could do is I could take this group and I could copy that over here 
and then take both of those and copy them over here, which should give me the same. So now the legs are going the same direction and I have four separate ones. And then obviously I could dress the top however I wanted to. I could merge it together, whatever. But keeping these as separate components. If they had been components before I copied, it wouldn't have made a difference because it would have still taken the container and moved it. But this would be maybe an option on maintaining that geometry whilst copying. So there's some thoughts. I know there, there was a little bit of uh, creative wanderings. We walked around and we looked at some stuff and decided what the best way to do it was. Uh, but that's kind of the fun of having a tool and figuring out the best way to use it. Um, there's not, like I said, not a one size fits all because not all issues are the same. Everybody's got to has different concerns, different things they got to get done, and they're going to get addressed in different ways. So hopefully that helped you. Um, and also hopefully you click like if it did and go ahead and subscribe and maybe even share this with somebody you think might have this issue. Leave us a comment down below too. Uh, we love making videos like this, but man, when, when you guys weigh in and tell us your ideas or uh, different ways that you might go about this, that's when we create content that is really good and uh, hopefully keeps you coming back for more. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time.